Welcome everyone to Off the Cuff. This is our post championship show as we review the Final Four and the championship game of the 2015 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. I'm Adam Banks. Thank you for listening to the show. Chad Rainwater is with me here in the studio. And Chad, this is a very gloomy day here in Lexington, Kentucky because we are kind of hungover from the whole Kentucky loss. Yeah, the rain outside isn't the only thing making it gloomy. Uh, you know what happened last night? Duke winning the championship. <sighs> yes. Definitely didn't expect us to be sitting here like this and talking about Duke winning the championship. That Duke. Depressing. Duke wins their fifth championship. Uh, they, uh, I, I can't even believe it. I, if you would have asked me at the beginning of the season uh, who, how the season was going to end, one, I would have never thought that. Kentucky would have won as many games as they did, and two, I didn't think that Duke would be uh, the national champions, especially after uh, the the recent history that Duke's had at, at March uh, during March Madness. They lost to Lehigh and Mercer the last couple March Madnesses. It was, and now they're the champions. Talk about uh, coming out on top after all those. Yeah, but we talked about it. Uh, Indianapolis is just their place. Uh, this is their third. Uh, championship in uh, out of five times in Indianapolis. I think we talked about that on a couple po- uh, podcasts a couple of times ago. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. So, but uh, I, I'm lost for words right now. I'm still two days after losing to Wisconsin. It's still, it, had, it hasn't really hit me yet still, but the season's already over and I guess I'll have to live on with it. Yeah, well, you know, we uh, promised our listeners we would uh, do a show, and here we are. We showed up. We could have easily just thrown in the talent and said, we're not doing it. We're done with basketball. <laughs> but we're going to give you guys uh, just one more full sports show uh, to cover college basketball, and then we'll move on and, and talk about other things. But let's review the Final Four, Kentucky versus Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin won a heavyweight fight in a football stadium. They played in the Lucas Oil Stadium. And... Uh, they uh, wanted to beat a undefeated team, Kentucky, and uh, they pulled it off. If you think that's weird, just think about this. The Badgers stuck the only loss on Kentucky this season despite star seven-footer Frank Kaminsky. He scored nearly 17 – he went nearly 17 minutes without scoring in the second half, and they still won. So what did you think of that game? Man – to start off with Saturday, I was so excited for this game. Uh, look, at, I, I I never would have expected to lose to Wisconsin. You know, uh, going in there 38-0, no, you just didn't think a group full of uh, white guys were going to get Kentucky. But they had revenge to get, man. They, uh, after beating them last year, they, they came out. They won this game more than we did. And I just don't think that uh, – I, I don't think that our guys um, – not they were ready for the game, but I just don't think they thought that Wisconsin was as good as they were. Um, it's kind of hard to explain why I, why this happened like this the way it did. Um, we were obviously the better team, but not on Saturday. We wasn't. Kentucky's quest to become the first undefeated champion uh, team since Indiana went thirty two and zero in nineteen seventy six. I, you know, you talk about somebody who's happy is probably Bobby Knott. Oh, he's definitely happy about this. He, he did not want to see us go 40 and 0. No, he did not. And, you know, I don't think there's been anything released that he has said, but, you know, he's probably sitting at home in his long johns as an old man. How old is he now? 95. But he is just happy as a as a lark. Well, you know, next year he won't be on ESPN, so we won't have to see him any. That's right. He his contract did not get renewed with ESPN. That good. I mean, the man, the, <laughs> sad. the man used to the man used to fall asleep during uh, broadcast games. And he didn't know what the shot clock was. was that against <laughs> Vanderbilt a couple years ago, and he didn't know what the shot where the was it where the shot clock was or what the shot clock was. It was something I don't know. He it was something was with so the shot. I remember that. Yeah, and, and you know, I think he, he's definitely don't. I don't want to take any credit away from Bobby Knight. He is. He was in his time. He was a great coach, but. You know, when you get older, as you know, as as we age, our brains don't work the same, and our bodies don't uh, act the same. So, you know, he's it's time for him to ride off in the sunset and kind of give 
kind of give his career a rest and just uh, play some golf for for old uh, Bobby Knight. But you know, uh, Indiana still they still hold that uh, record of being undefeated and also winning a national championship. But after the game was over, uh, it was a very emotional press conference. A lot of the players they uh, got teary eyed. They were hugging each other, had their arms around each other, and Coach Calipari. He said, quote, I can't say enough about what these kids did to get to this point against the schedule they played. Um, so I think Cal was just happy in general for the way his season turned out. I mean, winning 38 games straight in a row is hard to do. I don't think anybody really realizes how hard it is to do. And it's just really unfortunate that Kentucky went 38-1, and one, and most people are going to remember the 1 instead of the 38. Yeah, I agree. This is this is supposed to be our year. Um, we were we were supposed to go forty and zero, win the championship, and now we're kind of going to get overlooked because in two thousand fifteen, you're not going to think about oh, Kentucky won thirty eight games, only lost one. You're going they're going to be more worried about Duke winning the national championship. So this is going to get overlooked, kind of like um, last year when we beat Wichita State. You never really heard much more about Wichita State's uh, uh, undefeated season. So I just kind of think this is kind of just going to float away and not be brought up much anymore. You know, I, I, I agree with you, you know, because we talked about this on one of our previous shows that people, uh, you know, people remember the, who the champion is. They really don't even remember who was in the Final Four that year. They or might, who they played. Or, or even who they played, right. You mention a year, you name the team who won, and uh, it's just really unfortunate. And I think for Kentucky to have had that spectacular year, they was going to have to go 40-0. and They were going to have to go undefeated. They were going to have to win the national championship. But now it's kind of like all that's in vain. Even though Coach Cal uh, did a, and the team did a great thing, they won 38 games in a row. It's very hard to do, not to take anything away from them. But they still, because of that one loss, it kind of puts a very big stain on this historical season for uh, Kentucky. So, you know, it's it's just very unfortunate. But Coach Cal, he uh, kind of had a uh, good weekend and a bad weekend. He uh, lost, of course, uh, in the Final Four, but Coach Cal got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think it's very well deserved. What do you think? I definitely agree. Um, the, only th- the only knock on Cal right now is that he only has one national championship. But, I mean, look at least look at the past – but well, since he's been in Kentucky, he's gotten us to four, three Final Fours. Um, We've been to four Final, four fours, Final fours out of six years that he's been in Kentucky. Yeah, so just look at that. It's not. I don't think that they should knock him down just because he's only has one national championship. I mean, I think we talked about this earlier that uh, this should have been our uh, this should have been our fourth national championship since Cal's been here. Well, it's crazy. Like uh, if we if if. The co- if college basketball did this thing where they were where they had like a series, series in the yes. final four, they got to where it wasn't just you lose a game, you're out, and it was like the best out of a seven series um, playoff game, like in the NBA. Then of course Kentucky would have came out on top this year. Kentucky would have came out on top of a lot of years, but you know that's that could go for any team that was the number one seed and they lost. You know, there's been plenty of uh, teams that's been the number one overall seed and they don't win the national championship, but. It's weird because in 2010, Kentucky was the best team in the nation and Duke won. 2015, Kentucky's the best team in the nation and and Duke won. So why is Duke just coming and stealing our thunder, man? It makes me hate (laughs) uh, not only Leitner, but it just makes me hate Duke so much. Yeah, I really hate Duke. Um, Yeah, like you said, both of those years, this was our year, and Duke came and stole our thunder. Uh, I don't don't know. Um, It's just a... We just think that because we're Kentucky fans that it had to have been – it couldn't have been even worse. Like, any team – why Duke? Why does that have to be Duke? And I guess we're both running the same thing. Right. Why does that have to be Duke that that does that at least those two years? I mean, I don't know. I'd rather see any other team, maybe even Louisville, win this this year and in 2010 over oof, Duke. You, you don't think so? No, no, no. no. I, can't, I can't do Louisville I just now. hate Duke, okay. not just for the Leitner, but I just cannot stand Duke. Like, yeah. Duke or North Carolina, both teams in North Carolina, I cannot stand. You know, and the Louisville fans, you guys can just stop. Like, I, I see your comments, and I see your, your, your Facebook statuses and your Twitter posts, 
and I know a lot of them are directed towards me, these little fans that I'm friends with, just stop it. Like, I cannot, I mean, you didn't even make it to the Final Four. You lost in the Elite Eight. If you had beat us, we beat you every time we meet you in the tournament. Uh, ever since Cal's came to Kentucky, what is the record against? Eight and uh, one. Eight and one against Patino. I mean, just just – just stop. Just yeah. Louisville can just shut it. Yeah, my manager at work today said that uh, there's nothing worse than watching a game, uh, a UK game with a bunch of Louisville fans. And I was like, man, they weren't even – and he's like, nothing was even worse than that. Or what was worse than actually watching the game with Louisville fans is that we lost. And I was like, but Louisville wasn't even in the Final Four. Like, right. They lost round, like one round ago, and I just – they just think they're just as good as we are when in reality they're not even close at all. Right. So, uh, you know, it was a very emotional press conference, but things kind of got a little heated, and it made national uh, news. It got national attention when Andrew Harrison made a comment, which included a racial slur. Apparently, there was a question being asked to Carl Anthony Towns, and the mic was still on. Uh, Andrew Harrison's mic was still on, and under his breath, he said, F that N word. <laughs> and, you know... It got brought up. Of course, it had to be brought up because it was a racial slur and it was made a, uh, into a big deal. But then all of a sudden, it just disappeared. It just vanished. It's just nobody's talking about it anymore. So I wonder, makes me beg the question, if the roles were reversed and Frank Kaminsky was the one who said that about Andrew Harrison, like Andrew Harrison said that about Kaminsky, would it have been a bigger deal? Uh, I think it would have been, uh, given that Kaminsky is white and not the... N word. Uh, <laughs> He's not African American. Yeah, right? but you know how they are nowadays. Like, just the word that word is like completely changed. Like, and for African Americans, like that that word means more than just one thing. Yeah. And so, uh, it's yeah. I, I just don't think that they should have been. It shouldn't have been a big deal as it was. I mean, yeah, maybe not the racial slur, but the word he used before that. I think that's what did it. Not the. Party used the end. I'm trying to. It's hard to talk about this when I'm not actually saying what it is. But I'm not going to say that over the air. Right, right. I, I know. But what I think it's the fact that he said "f you" towards Kaminsky. That's what did it. It wasn't the actual racial. Really? See, I really think it was the racial you think slur. It was? Yes, I, I just think that anytime that word is brought up, it just it it's going to get thrown into. Um, but he just a big he he is. Controversy. But but it was coming from a. For, it was coming. Guy. It was coming from a black guy, right? And I think that that's what makes it okay, as far as um, everybody's in the eyes of everybody. Uh, ex I don't. I think that that word is a word that should be, just be eliminated from everyone's vocabulary because it's a word that brings up. T it's, it's a word that was used during slavery, and it was a word that was brought up uh, just to only. It, it meant bad things, so I don't understand why the culture uses it, and it's the re then they still use it, and it's just silly that they can say it, and it's okay. But when white people say it, it's not okay. Right. It just it just blows my mind. And Stephen A. Smith, somebody who uh, is the host of First Take on ESPN, he gets on there and he, he says that he doesn't think there was anything wrong with Andrew Harrison's comment because usually. Usually when an African-American male says that word towards somebody, it's his, it doesn't mean anything bad. Right. So, I mean, and it probably didn't. He probably meant nothing bad by it, but still I think it's a huge double standard in this country. I, I do. Yeah, I agree. I, you just hate to see, especially the, I mean, especially with this being perhaps the Harrison Twins' last game, um, you just hate to see that happen. That's the last thing you're gonna remember of him is him saying that again for uh, saying that towards Kaminsky. And you know these guys are great kids, and this is it just sucks that that had to happen to us. Because you talk about how classy our this team was, and for us to say that, that's just it's uncalled for. It, it really was. So uh, you know that's it's a lot of it was a bad night for Kentucky, but you know it was, when, a, spur, it was a heat of the moment, like. Yeah, I mean, if you had the worst day of your life, Chad, you know, think about the worst day of your life, or think about a bad day that you've had, and if, and there was a microphone in front of you right at that very second, after the worst news that you got, or right after the worst thing that ever happened to you happened, and a mic is put in your face, and you're asked a question, you're 
you're going to mess up. You're going to say something that's just. You want me to say what I was going to say? What total, I'd say? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not going to no, say I that mean, over there. Be, but yeah, yeah, it would, it would not be anything good, and I'm sure I would get some crap for it. Yeah. But that's that. That's in in this instance. That's what that's what happened. Yeah. You know, like that was. I, I just let's just go on. You know, and, <laughs> right? And, you know, and it's hard, and it's hard to to do post game shows in general. Um, it's hard to interview the coach. It's hard to interview the players uh, from the losing end. So because their emotions fly and a lot of things are said, and you really just have to keep your uh, your uh, temper and, and show some cooth there. It's hard situation. to do that. It is, but you know, uh, it was a, a tragic way to end the season for Kentucky. But you know, the next thing in their sight is the NBA, and there's been some speculation on who's going, who's staying. The news that I've got so far is. Five to seven players could be leaving Kentucky. And here's the the two that are definite. Willie Colley-Stein and Carl Anthony Towns. It's not been announced, but they're definitely going to go. I mean, Carl Towns is projected in almost every draft board to go number one, probably to the New York Knicks. Willie Colley-Stein will be in the top ten, of course. And uh, I think that the other ones will be the twins, Andrew and Aaron Harrison, uh, and Trey Lyles will be the other ones to leave, but I think that's going to be it. I think we're going to get Devin Booker back. We're going to get Dakari back. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, I agree, but I could see – I could definitely see Dakari going. Um, you remember in 09-10 when uh, we had Daniel Orton and he left to go to the NBA, which we know how that turned out. I could see Dakari going just because I feel like he doesn't want to be in school. Uh, I think he's ready to make a little bit of money. Um, he's not that athletic, but I think he'd be a decent guy in the NBA. Maybe not in his first couple of years, but I think he could turn into a good NBA player. But I think also think that if he stayed for a couple more years, that he could really be maybe like a – he reminds me of like an old school. Like he could be like a next Al Jefferson, one of the old school big guys. But, uh, yeah, I just think that he should stay one or two more years, at least one more year. And uh, I think Booker should stay as well. Uh, you know, in the beginning of the season, he was shooting lights out. I think he was an elite, uh, leading three-point percentage shooter in the SEC. But he kind of died down as the season went on. Yeah. Um, I know he got really hot. He was really hot there for a while, and it was going up. The uh, his stock was definitely going up. But uh, I, I, I would like to see Booker back. I think that he kind of fell off there. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if if he left. You know, I mean, when when that money's out there on the table for you, you just want to take and run. You don't. You're not worried about school. No, you're not. I mean, and and you got to think. You, I think his dad is pushing him to go towards the NBA, and he's pushing him kind of out the door. I, I could be wrong, but you know, Devin Booker is definitely a fifty-fifty. I, I don't. I think he's going to stay. So, in my opinion, I think he will stay, but it is definitely 50-50 for right. that kid. Yeah. I, you could flip a coin and sell on that. Yeah, and Dakari, I believe, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not really 100% positive on Dakari's financial situation. I know the kid didn't grow up financially secure, and he uh, would be presented with the possibility to make millions. So, I, you know, it, it's hard to turn that down, too. And plus, he's got a family that he wants to provide for, so... Right. You know, even though it's second round and there's no guaranteed money in the second round, it, you know, still tempting when the fruit is dangled right in front of you. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Only a couple more weeks until they have to declare what they have until uh, April. Was it the 17th? So ten days until they can, uh, when they put their name in the draft. Right. And Kentucky's going to have a great team oh, next yeah. year. I mean, we have a great coach. He's going to. I mean, he he, you know, come on. He just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's the AP Coach of the Year. He actually won the Adolph Rupp Coach of the Year, too. I don't know what that entails, but he, he won that award. But uh, we, we have awesome McDonald All-Americans, five-star recruits, Isaiah Briscoe, Sky, what's his last name? LeBissier. It'll take, take me a while. LeBissier, LeBissier. I don't know. It's going to take, Scow, me, it's gonna take me a let's while to uh, be able to pronounce that name. But, yeah, let's call him Scow. Um, Charles Matthews is another one. And then there's still some on the table. There's uh, – Andrew Zimmerman. Zimmerman. And then there's uh, Malik, Malik Newman. Newman, of course, yes. So Kentucky's going to be okay. Oh, definitely. ESPN came out with the preseason polls for 2015-2016, uh, and you got the Cats number one already. So we'll see We'll see how it goes. It's, it won't be a – there's no way that we're going to be in the talks for a 40-0 season like we were this year. But I wouldn't be – I don't think – and I don't think it would be as bad as uh, – 
uh, Archie Goodwin in Ner Nerland's year. It may be like we had last year, but look what happened in the look, we got to a championship game. And so. that's what ultimately matters. That's what matters. That's what ultimately matters. Duke versus Wisconsin. I'm sorry, not Duke versus Wisconsin. Michigan State versus Duke was the uh, other Final Four game. Chad, what's your take on that game? Well, well, well looking back, um, you kind of thought that you were gonna that Kentucky was gonna play the winner of this game. So I was kind of rooting for uh, Michigan State. We talked about it uh, before that uh, we wouldn't be surprised to see Michigan State knock off Duke. But uh, Duke was uh, obviously the better team in this matchup. Uh, I missed, <laughs> actually missed all but like the first five minutes of this game. Uh, and uh, North or not North Carolina, Michigan State uh, came out came out uh, pretty hot. Uh, and then we, by the time we got downtown, I think Duke had already gotten up to like an eight point lead, and yeah. you kind of knew that Michigan State was going to fall off because Duke was obviously, I mean, the better team and the at the time the uh, one of the top teams in the nation. But uh, yeah, just Duke's uh, freshman just overpowered Michigan State's or Michigan State. So not, I'm not really surprised, but. Then again, like I said, I I could have seen there was a little chance in me. There's a little thing in me that thought that uh, Michigan State could have beat them. So it comes down to the championship game after the Final Four games were played, and that was of course Duke versus Wisconsin. And uh, this ends the show. No, <laughs> <laughs> of course, unfortunately, we got to talk about it. But Duke versus Wisconsin, it was. Uh, the first championship game to be tied at halftime since 1988. Did you know that? Did not know that. Yes. And uh, that. it was a close game all the way through. Kaminsky had Okafor's number all night. And he, um, you know, goading him into unchar uncharacteristic fouls and turnovers. Like when he coughed it up in the, second ha in the uh, first half, he would just take the ball, strip it from his hands, just um, like a magic trick. Yeah, that's the difference in your uh, veteran guys in Comiskey going up against Okafor, who's uh, still he's a freshman. So it's just uh, it's just mistakes that Okafor made. But I I didn't mind seeing Comiskey doing that to Okafor because I was cheering for Wisconsin. I was but, too. Uh, I was too. I was for Wisconsin. That was a great game. It it really was. I, I told myself I wasn't going to watch it, but you know, college basketball is so important in my life. Uh, it's just hard to no matter who's in the in the championship, you always want to at least turn it on. And watch right, and I, and I told myself, and I told you, I said, I'm not going to watch you it. Did, and you ended up watching and it all. I ended up watching it all, man, and I ended up finding myself getting into it, cheering for Wisconsin, even though they beat Kentucky, and I'm a huge Kentucky fan. It was, I felt, I felt weird. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, like, it, the, towards the end of the game, I was, I was getting nervous. Like, I, th I was the only one up at the time, and, uh, my my heart was pounding like it was like UK was on. Right. Like UK was playing. Like, I was, I was pulling for Wisconsin so bad. And, uh, I mean, it, 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 the season ended really bad, but it would have been a lot better if Wisconsin could have won that. Because there's not much to hate on that team. Like, uh, I even posted it as my Facebook status. Uh, there's this, I mean, what's it about Wisconsin to hate? Like, they're a good team. Like, Duke, on the other hand, is Duke. Like, you don't even have to just list off reasons why you hate Duke. It's right. Duke. But right. it's Wisconsin. They haven't won since, like, 19... 40? Right. Is it 40? I don't know what it was. But they they won time. one championship. Yeah, right. so I mean... Bo Ryan's a lockable lose. guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm kind of starting to like Kaminsky. Um, he's, I think he'll be a good player in the, down the road. I think but, he'll have a great NBA career. I think oh, yeah. he, he reminds me a lot of uh, Nowitzki. Yeah, yeah. I never even thought about that, but that's a perfect... That's a great example there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Coach K, he wins his fifth championship. So, Coach K, greatest of all time? Um, no. No? Uh, no, nah, he probably is. I just don't want to give him any credit. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> you can speak on that. Okay, Coach K, you know, I, I have to say, and uh, it, it's been all over ESPN, Coach K, love him or hate him, he won five national championships. He's been to so many Final Fours, and he's done it in every decade that he's been a coach. And so he that means he's – been to the Final Four at different times when the game was different, and right. you know, and not to take anything away from Adolf Rupp or, or coaches like John Wooden or Dean Smith, but you know, the game was a lot different when these coaches coached. There was, you know, when not as many games when Adolf Rupp was the coach. What there was maybe what uh, 
12 games played in a season yeah. and there was only 16 games in the uh, in the tournament. Yeah. Now you're there's 68 teams in the tournament and there's 40 games in a season. And and when college basketball in the modern era is like it is, coach K is the one who has been that coach in the modern era to win national championships. I mean, he is the winningest coach uh, one of the is is he the winningest coach currently in the game he, today? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Or is yeah. he the winningest coach of all time? Um, I think maybe he's, all time. Maybe he's the one of all time. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's that he's won five national championships in the modern era, which is harder to do. It's harder to win a championship now than it was back when Adolph Rupp and John Wooden coached. Do you agree with that? I definitely agree on that point there. So you know, uh, Coach K. Speaking about Facebook statuses. When you posted that about Wisconsin, I was posting all kinds of hate towards Duke, but I just had to make a comment towards Coach K. I just put Coach K. Wow. I mean, that's just – when you think about what he's done, it's it's really – it's just – as a college basketball fan, you can, you know, agree to disagree, but it's just – it's amazing because it's so hard to make – even make the tournament – and to, to be one of the 68 teams in the tournament, to win it all five times, it's quite remarkable. It is definitely remarkable. So, Duke, there you go. That's your national champions. The referees, though, I, I want to talk about that. They're, they were awful. Where are they finding these guys? <laughs> I mean, they uh, the referees that coached the Wisconsin and U.K. game, their names were Vern Harris, John Higgins, and Doug Sermons. The, the referees in the – Duke versus Wisconsin game was Pat Drissel, Jada, Rosa. No, that's definitely uh, – I think it was supposed to be Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe Rosa. It was Joe De Rosa. You that's just wrote it that's really bad when I can't even read my own handwriting. You said Joe De Rosa. And then what do I have written over there? Is it Mike Steve, Nick Stevens? Um – Stevens, Mr. Stevens. I don't know, but it looks <laughs> like Mr. Stevens. Anyway, like Mr. Stevens. the refs were awful. They they, they were terrible. They, uh, It makes you think, is there a conspiracy theory going on in college basketball where, think about it, all these fans that have money and that are college basketball fans that are betting on these games, I wonder if they maybe had $20 million on the championship game and then they went and they paid the ref $5 million just to um, – Blow the game for uh, Wisconsin. Maybe that was a possibility. What do you think? I definitely agree on the uh, conspiracy theory. Uh, sometimes it makes me think, it, yeah, is college basketball rigged? I mean, not just in college basketball, but other sports. But yeah, but because it just seems like I, I don't know. It, 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 it say if my team loses in a game, if my team is losing, is out of the tournament, whatever. The team that I hate the most in the tournament always finds a way to win. That was when it, it makes me so aggravated. And, and just like last night when Duke win, won, like there were so many calls that were obviously wrong Yeah. and they still didn't change them. Like, and then that makes you think that like, is it, is it rigged? Like, are they really trying to help that team win the championship or it, or advance to the next round or whatever? But I, I definitely agree on what you said there that, uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and uh, if I could ever make a documentary, I would love to make a documentary about referees. And I would love to just be able to enter. No, seriously, I would like to make a, a documentary about basketball referees that coach college games and NBA games. And just ask them questions like, have you ever been offered money to throw a game? Have you ever been threatened if you don't call a game a certain way? You know, that that's also an option. They that they could have been threatened. Right. I will kill yeah. you if you uh, call more calls in favor of Duke than Wisconsin. You know, those things could happen. And, um, you know, referees, they have so much power in a game. But... You know, it's we'll never know. It's one yeah. of those things we'll never know unless somebody comes forward. Yeah, and it's really sad that it comes down to that. You know, like these are college kids, and in this case, yeah, college basketball players. And if it really was rigged, like that would be that's horrible. This isn't scripted. This isn't WWE. Right. Like this is for. Well, I guess it's more than fun, but it's a game. Like it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be uh, dictated by who's officiating it. I absolutely agree with but you. But that's what it came down to in this game and a little bit in the Kentucky and Wisconsin game. 
Well, uh, as college basketball is coming to a close, uh, there have uh, been a few more coaching changes that have happened in the world of coaching. Avery Johnson was hired at Alabama. He was a former NBA coach, and he actually went to the NBA Finals in 2006, which I didn't know that about him. And he, But the thing about uh, Avery Johnson is he missed the playoffs the last two years. So it's kind of weird. You know, you have a successful year in 2006, but your most recent years aren't so successful, but you all of a sudden get a head coaching job at your alma mater. I don't know. Was it a good hire? Was it well, a bad I guess hire? I guess since they think that you can coach in the NBA, they guess I guess they think that you can coach. But it's totally better different. In basketball. That is true. It is totally different. But uh, I, I think the hire is good. I guess we'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm not sure if it was a better hire than Greg Marshall. No, it, it definitely got, was not a better hire than Greg Marshall. Greg Marshall, of course, he stayed at Wichita, got a three point three million dollar contract to stay at Wichita. But I agree with you. I don't think it's a bad hire. I, I think that the SEC is looking pretty strong. Oh as yeah, far definitely. We've already got what three, or four like top name coaches in yes. the past month. I think the SEC will really start to pick up here in the next couple of years. Like if you just look at the coaches overall in the SEC, really some big names. And the guy who was coaching Alabama, the interim coach who uh, took over the program and coached him in the NIT, uh, was his name was John Brannon. And after Anthony Grant got fired, John Brandon kind of stepped in that role of head coach, interim head coach. But he got a job at Northern Kentucky University. I think uh, that's a good fit for him. I think NKU is a great place to go and coach and get your start as a head coach. What I like about NKU, it has potential to be a huge school. It's got a great recruiting area. You have Cincinnati. You know, you have Kentucky. You know, and you have you know a lot of the South there that you can uh, that you can uh, compete with. Right. And it's NKU. Have you ever been up there on that campus? I have not. They have great facilities. They just built a uh, multi million dollar uh, arena for their basketball program. So they have that as a recruiting tool to give to show players. So I think NKU is a great place to um, to uh, coach. Shaka Smart, of course, he left. His uh, school, VCU, where he went to the Final Four in 2011 and made the tournament pretty much every year after that. But he was hired at Texas. Good hire or bad hire? Uh, I like the move. It says that he was uh, – it, it says it wasn't the money that got him to go to Texas. He just wants to win the championships. I don't think uh, – um, I don't think staying at VCU, I don't think you're going to win much there, like no. championship-wise. Even in the tournament, like they had one good – or one really good run, but I think Texas uh, is a is a good school to be at. To, um, you'll you'll he'll definitely win a lot there. Um, I, they haven't been to the Final Four since oh six, oh three, oh six. One of the, I can't remember what year it was, but uh, I, I think this is a really good hire. I guess we'll see how he turns out. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you. I think that Shaka needed to go ahead and move from VCU. He he was a really hot coach in 2011 when he made that Final Four, and he, and he decided to stay at VCU. And he has never been hotter than he ever was in 2011. So that train was it was passing by, and it was almost to the end, I think. So he needed to jump on and, and make his move on what he wanted to do. And I think Texas was probably, the at this point in time, his, his best place to go. Uh, but really, that's all the notable coaches that I wanted to mention as far as uh, who left and, and who goes. I uh, I think that Billy Donovan could be a uh, a coach that we're probably going to lose in the SEC. I think that would be detrimental to our conference in the SEC because Donovan is uh, such an awesome coach, and he always has Florida playing great, minus this year. But uh, he's wanting to be in the NBA uh, awfully bad. But, you know, that – that's that. You know, in other news, before we go, did you hear about Rand Paul? I heard a little bit about it. He right. announced his uh, presidency for the uh, United States of America. He's running for president. I, I think that a good old Kentucky boy will uh, run this country just fine. And I like how he waited until <laughs> today to announce his presidency because he wanted to wait till after March Madness. Because right. he knows that if he announced it during March Madness, nobody was going to care. Yeah, because yeah. In this state, anyway. And, but, uh, but, yeah. 
Who's, uh, the, who's the last person to run for presidency from Kentucky? Or has there ever been a person? Ron Paul, his father. Ron Paul? Yeah, he was, that was in? he was a congressman. He ran the last election against Obama. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he never won the Republican nomination. Oh. So his son... I thought running. it been a, would have been a while ago. Yeah, and his, his kid goes to UK. He's a student at UK, I, I believe. I don't want to be on record for this, but I guess I am because I'm on the air. But I think he's a Kappa Sig, which was the same fraternity that I was in at Moorhead. But I think he's a Kappa Sig at UK. Uh, a big troublemaker. He, big troublemaker? Yeah, big, big troublemaker. <laughs> like he gets in, He's going to probably get his dad into a lot of trouble. Maybe we'll have him on the show. I'm, <laughs> and I, you just your I just bone. crushed my elbow before we <laughs> before we end, but that uh, basically sums our season up. You know, we don't get any more college basketball until October. You know, we watch hoops, college hoops, all year for the hopes of having a a great championship game. And and you know, we we got one. Wisconsin and Duke was a great championship game. Our team wasn't in there, but. Um, you know, we couldn't ask for a better championship game than what we had uh, last night. It was it was it was pretty fun to watch, and um, you know, it's pretty much sums up the whole basketball season as a whole. We'll miss you, college basketball. And uh, Chad, I want to thank you for uh, covering college sports with me. Yeah, man, definitely. It's always uh, it's always a pleasure to be on the show. I really enjoy doing this. Uh, look forward to it every week. It's gonna be. Uh, it's going to be sad to not have a off the cuff uh, basketball podcast. Well, you know, you're always welcome to come on off the cuff. We don't always have to talk about <laughs> sports, but you know, we could we can have a podcast maybe uh, to cover the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, definitely. Yeah, speaking yeah. of Reds, it started. That's what's going to hold me over until next next uh, basketball season. Right. You know, we could also talk about the playoffs in the NBA. Yeah. There's a lot for us to talk about. That is true. You know, so and I'm sure we want to talk about uh, Zach's wedding. Our buddy Zach's getting married and probably a lot of interesting things that will happen at the wedding that I think will be very entertaining for our audience. But ladies Definitely. and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the show. This is Adam Banks and Chad Rainwater with Off the Cuff. We'll see you in the next episode. See you guys. And my producer messing, messing up on my music.